everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So we are closing in on 80%. I probably won't make it today. Still got a ways to go, because that's close to 2,000 stitches. So, but plugging away, we will get there. Just searching through, trying to find a short little piece. So yeah, I'm adjusted to the new glasses now. I forgot I was wearing new ones yesterday, so. I guess that means we're good now. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so checked my apples. They are ready for harvest now. So I was right, I guessed last time I checked them about a week and it's been about that. So yeah, I'll be busy this week. <clears throat> Depends. Usually takes me about seven to ten days to do it. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, so I got a busy day planned. I gotta go and uh, get some groceries, and then I gotta make some jam and start on my juice. And I'll make videos of those, as I promised, of how I do it. It sounds very intimidating, but it's actually not as hard as people think. Yeah, I haven't made jam for a few years. We just don't eat that much of it, but I always make juice. <coughs> Pardon me. I've also got to start pruning my little tree. It's now well established, but it's starting to grow in weird directions in some areas. So, yeah. Gotta have to prune it this year. Yeah, so I looked up some videos. It doesn't look too terribly difficult. Fingers crossed, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, I can already see. When I looked the other day, I have a few branches. There's a couple that are bending back in towards the center, which kind of keeps the sunlight and the air from circulating in the center, which you, you want to keep that airflow and stuff. It grows a little better for making fruit. And um, there's some sprouts. I think they call them like water suckers. They said that um, basically they they grow and suck off, you know, nutrients and stuff. They steal nutrients from the rest of the tree, but they don't produce any fruit. So you have to kind of prune those back a bit too. So, <clears throat> so we'll see. Yeah, the big tree that's dying was kind of starting to get overgrown too. I just kind of haven't bothered doing anything with it. So I have to trim off some of those dead <clears throat> non-producing branches. Yeah, they also say if the branches are sort of growing, <clears throat> bending in on themselves and such, that makes it uh, easier for it to catch um, like fungus or a bug infestation, which can be bad for it, so. <coughs> Pardon me, so yeah. Yeah, not too bad, cause um, we bought that second little tree. The first one was here when we moved in. The little tree we bought for like 50 bucks at Canadian Tire, so. Yeah, not bad. My um, apple trees are pretty hardy too but um 
Yeah, my mother-in-law said she tried, she wanted a peach tree and it was like, it wasn't cheap. It was like 300 bucks or something for the tree. And then she said, yeah. And she nurtured it and cared for it and everything. And that thing produced one peach and then died. <laughs> so that was the most expensive peach she ever had. Oh dear. <clears throat> well, she said they had problems with, um, it flooded in their yard a bit and she thinks the roots rotted out and also the deer were always coming and eating the, uh, the blossoms off her tree so it never got a chance to, uh, to grow any fruit. <clears throat> because their house kind of backs up right onto a little forest area there. So yeah, the wildlife comes out. She um, tried to have a uh, koi pond as well too. And she said the raccoons figured out how to undo the latches um, that they had a grate on top of it so that they couldn't eat the fish. And the raccoons figured out how to undo it so they could eat the fish. So <laughs> they finally gave up. Oh dear. Yeah, those little guys are just too smart. My husband said when he was in the military, they had to make sure you locked the Jeeps because they knew how to unlock, or unlock, but open the doors. They would hang off the, the handles till they opened and yeah, go in there and, you know, chew things up and poof all over it and stuff, so. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, or I had a coworker who had a battle with raccoons in his yard because um they had put down fresh sod and the um raccoons would keep coming and pulling it up to try and see if there was any food underneath and so the grass couldn't take root, right? Because they uh yeah, they kept on digging it up. So he would be sitting on his uh, back porch with a uh, with a hose, scaring them off, or attempting to anyway. Yeah, I saw one on Funny Stone videos where the raccoon would actually reach inside the dog door and steal the dog food. <laughs> Ooh, they caught it on their security camera. Okay. Yeah, luckily here, I think it might be too cold for them where I live. I haven't seen any. I've seen a fox a few times. Not the um, stereotypical orange ones, but it was a gray gray fox. So you don't see much. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty skittish. So I saw it across the road and then it ran off. <laughs> yeah, here where I live, we don't have a ton of wildlife. If we do, it's mostly, uh, hares. We haven't seen ours for a while. Yeah, on my morning walk, there's a uh, some hoof prints in uh, some concrete. We think a deer must have gone through it while it was... Uh, well, the concrete was still wet.
Yeah, I got two more zeros on this pattern in the last week. Some light colors, a couple of light pinks, or one light pink and a, an off-white beige color. <clears throat> so that was exciting. I always love when I get to a zero. Okay, I've got a fair amount of that color kind of scattered around, so I'm going to end up with multiple threads of it, I can tell already. soon it'll be time to uh, move the frame and do an update video of uh, the overall progress on my projects. Yeah, I actually got more done on this than I thought I would this month considering We're away for almost a week and a half. So I missed almost a third of the stitching time this month. So yeah, actually did pretty good progress considering. to take the uh, poor guinea pig to the vet again because uh, she was getting uh, fur, patches of fur coming out again. She had that before, about nine months ago. <clears throat> they uh, said she's got a, a cyst on one of her ovaries, which is quite big. They said it's one millimeter, which doesn't sound big, but they said for larger animals like horses and stuff, they consider it a large one when it's three millimeters. So yeah, for you know, a guinea pig that weighs, you know, like two pounds. <laughs> That's quite big. So, yeah, they, uh, they gave her a hormone shot, and then she gets another one in two weeks. And if it works like last time, her fur grew back in all nice and thick. So, <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, because they said if it was a tumor, they need surgery. But unfortunately, small animals like her often don't don't make it through surgery because of the anesthesia is too uh, too much for such a little little animal. So I'm not sure we'd want to put her through that either. She's uh, she's an old gal. We wouldn't want her to suffer. Yeah, she does have slightly limited mobility to what she used to. Because I used to put her food and stuff up on the upper level of her cage, the perch, but um, she doesn't like to walk up the ramp anymore. Oh, which I said, which is fair. She's got to be eight. And they generally live six to eight years. So yeah, she's a, she's an older lady. Harder for her to get around. So I moved all her food and stuff to the bottom. She used to go up to the perch, she'd eat, she'd spread the hay out and she'd take a nap in it, but yeah, she stopped wanting to go up there, so. <clears throat> yeah, they nap quite a lot. like cats and they purr too like cats when they're happy yeah i totally didn't know that they purred till we had one <laughs> okay i can see so this is the yeah where the fountain is falling back into the water it's making the ripples here is what we're stitching That's a short one, too. <coughs> oh, pardon me. This one. Oh, yeah, that's definitely short. Okay. So a fair bit of color changing in this area and then I can see not in this diagonal but in the next couple diagonals <coughs> this one we're going to do the other swans that were that are in the fountain I kind of thought maybe we were doing swans over here but no that's the uh, the water ripples similar colors so wasn't sure till I stitched it up. That one will stay, so I'm going to unthread it. Somebody out there has a very loud engine for such a small car. <laughs> they must live around here. They go by quite a bit. And I always look up expecting to see a great big truck or something, and then it's just like a little hatchback. Hmm. <clears throat> I 
Okay, now this one that I just parked earlier is only going to be long enough for one, I think. No, only six more of this color. I wonder if they're all in this area. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I will get them in this pass. Excellent. Yeah, I have a couple where I got all but like one or two stitches and they're in the next <laughs> horizontal pass across. That was kind of irritating. <laughs> Thinking, oh good, another zero, and then no, no, not quite. Next time. But yeah, we're less than fifty thousand stitches left, so. Yeah, it's funny because when I first started cross stitching, I would have thought 50,000 stitches. Oh my gosh, that's huge. And now I'm saying there's only 50,000 stitches left. Yeah, my next project is a smaller one and it's like 50, around 50,000 stitches. So it'll be a quicker one. It'll probably take me less than six months. I like my big projects, but sometimes something a little smaller is a nice break as well. Especially since I don't like to switch projects a lot. I know some people rotate through their projects a lot, but I mostly focus on one project at a time. Like I do have where I'm doing the background of other projects for when I'm... Oops that around my needle minder there we go for yeah when I uh I want to stitch but too tired to concentrate then I I stitch the background that I've outlined fill it in it's mindless work yeah I'm approaching two percent done on my firefly project so <laughs> yeah We'll see if I ever get that one done or not. It's a lot. It's over a half million. Okay, I think this will be just enough for these two. Yeah. And then that other thread I'm going to carry up and to the uh, right instead of down to the left. A 
lot of very, very short ones parked here. And try and see that's a longer one yet so I'm gonna do a short one for just that one in the corner there if I have it which I do perfect <laughs> yeah, speaking of my apple tree earlier, my husband wants to see if we can keep this one from not growing quite as tall so that it's easier to uh, harvest. Although I think there's only so much we can do. I think it's going to end up being as tall as the uh, two-story house. Not much we can do about that, I'm thinking. Don't want to cut it too aggressively. Damage it. Yeah, and then it's supposed to have some scorching hot days this week. I said, of course, the week that I have to make the uh, the apple juice <laughs> is when it's going to be all hot and humid. <laughs> oh, yeah, that often happens, unfortunately. Not much you can do about it. The harvest kind of comes right at that last gasp of summer. had one time I had to do it it was really humid and I was pressure canning that time because I was canning chicken and uh, I did I think three batches in one day so the inside of my windows was like so much condensation it was dripping I had to go around with a uh, towel and wipe them down <laughs> oh boy yeah now that I have my instant pot. I don't really can meat anymore, but I made really nice homemade broth and made for a lot of easy meals. You have to pressure can it because um, water bath canning does not get hot enough to kill any potential toxins in there. So, whereas with um. Well, they call it, it's a low acid food. High acid food like jam or something, water bath canning is sufficient because the acid in the fruit is enough to ensure that it kills off all those potentially dangerous organisms in there along with the heat combined. But yeah, with a low acid food like, um, like meat, then yeah, it needs pressure canning because then it gets hotter. 
I like pickles. That's kind of why pickles became a thing. The vinegar helps to preserve it. So yeah, I've made both kinds. I've made, um, I've made dill pickles and I've also made sweet pickles. And it's funny because I'm usually a sour pickle kind of person, but when it was homemade, I really liked the sweet ones. They're really good. And I made pickled mushrooms too because uh, I really like those and I couldn't find them anywhere. Only thing I discovered with those is you have to let them sit for a month. If you, I opened one sort of right away, I was eager to taste it and I was like, oh, this isn't so good. But, you know, I'm not going to waste food, so whatever. I put them on my shelf. And then when I opened one later and tried, I was like, oh, this is really good. I didn't realize. Nobody told me. It has to sit for a month or so to really properly bring out the flavors. So. Yeah, I might do that again. <laughs> Pickled onions, too, are good. <laughs> My son liked them even when he was really little. He saw me eating them and he was he wanted some. And I thought, well, he's not going to like it. So I gave him one and he liked it so much and asked for more. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I had to make sure not to give him too many so he didn't get a sour stomach. Because <laughs> he was little. But now he can eat spicier food than I do. I must get that from his dad. Or maybe it skipped a generation. My mom likes really spicy food. I did not inherit that. <laughs> okay, I might be able to squeak the last two stitches out of this. I'm going to leave that threaded and see. Oops. Let's park it there. Let's see if I can get it to cooperate or not. Okay, 157 I do not have in my tray. Let's see, do I have a lot in this area? Eh, not a ton. If there was a ton, I would have moved this to the working tray, but there's not a lot. bunch of dark purples and bright pinks that I just swapped out of my tray because I just finished doing a bunch of the dark purple flowers to the left of the fountain. But now I'm kind of out of that area. And then we're moving along. We'll end up back into the uh, hedges and there's going to be some orange and yellow flowers along the right side. Yeah, it keeps this picture interesting. Excuse me. Mm. This is a really small piece I saved. It might be too short. <laughs> we'll see. I saved that. <laughs> that was too small. <laughs> I must have not been paying attention and instead of 
throwing it away into my end jar. I stuck it back in my envelope. Yeah, I like to get every last bit out of my thread, but even that was too short for even me. Instead, I'm going to use a longer one and park it. Just noticed that one wasn't lying flat the way I wanted it to. those ones. Okay, so all of these out of the diagonal, so put them out of my way. This one we will end off, and the other one we will carry on with. Like what I may do, I may park this one further over to the right, because I think it's enough for a few more. Yeah, I 
I plan to keep up with my videos for you all this week, but I probably won't make as much progress in between the uh, Stitch With Me sessions because uh, I'll be busy dealing with my apple harvest. go back the other way so that I can park in this upper right. That is my one rule. Okay, 87, 87. Okay, I think I can see Knees are crossing over each other. I'm going to end up doing something on the board. I'm actually switch to a longer piece, I think. Yeah, so try not to do it out of order, but sometimes that is just the most efficient way. That one, that one, that one. And then this one here. I have more than one thread in this area, I can tell already. Okay, actually, I have two fairly long ones that color. Gonna do do that, then so it's a bit of a carry there, but still within an inch, so. I will do that. Okay. A long time before we hit a zero on this color, that's for sure. A long ways to go. So 
this one I'm going to kind of break up so I don't do things out of order. Because in this instance, it's not going to be too complicated to do that. Yeah, when it gets to be more trouble than it's worth, then I just go out of order. See, this is the outer edges of that ripple there. So it's making like a ring, an oval pattern here. detail in this pattern is amazing. Makes it worth all the work. <laughs> went out of my method in one area and I was just kind of doing cross country around because there were so many colors and then I uh I got a knot in one thread and I didn't realize till after I'd stitched around it with a bunch of others so then I had to undo a bunch of stitches <laughs> so that I could free that knot and untie it and I said okay that is why I don't cross country anymore uh or I did that and also made him counting mistake and then I counted everything wrong around it and had a whole bunch of ripping back to do and I was like okay now I remember why I stopped doing that I made more mistakes that way so in the end it wasn't any faster you have to factor in all the fixing the <coughs> mistakes alrighty Here's another one that I can park and suck out of my way.
sometimes with different, several uh, separate threads of the same color, you gotta be careful you grab the correct one and that you're working in the correct uh, big square of 100. <laughs> so I have done that before. Not fun to fix later. kiddo in the background playing a game probably building something <laughs> that's why he's clicking away like crazy yeah, it's funny somebody was having a discussion the other day saying should you still say click on links considering most people are using touch screens now <laughs> kind of like how we still say taping a show even though there's no tape involved anymore yeah, I said I don't think I've Recorded anything on a VCR since, you know, 2004. <laughs> I still have one, but I haven't used it. Uh, my husband kept it because, like, our uh, our wedding video is on, um, on VHS and such. So we will have to, I guess, see about digitizing that at some point. Yeah, been meaning to also get a negative scanner, and digitize all my pre-digital photos, you know, a whole bunch of uh, negatives. It's like, I wonder how many places you could actually still take negatives to get things reprinted at this point. <laughs> you probably have to find someone who specializes in doing that like, uh, my sister and one of my cousins does um still does film photography and has a dark room and all that but yeah those are a lot harder to find but i think it's kind of like um vinyl records i think that's a medium that's going to stick around even as things change purists will still prefer the the old way of doing it Okay, let's see if we can squeak these last four out of this bit of thread or not. I think so. It's going to be tight, but I think we can make it. Should be 
careful it can get quite twisty and worn looking by the end so also have to calculate if that's worth it if it looks if it's going to look lousy when it's done then you're better off getting a new thread don't want it to look all worn out on your finished piece but we got it Okay, I think we'll still get a couple out of this one. Oops. Oh dear. back down through the fabric in the wrong place. Here. Yeah, that's all I'm going to get out of this thread anyway. Tie it off. This is kind of going over the line, but all I'm going to get is these last two stitches out of it, so I'm going to do it. Tie it off, and that's one less thread left hanging to deal with when I do my next diagonal. Ah, once I mark these done, I'll have a nice even 150 completed. That seems like a nice stopping point, I think. All right. Trim that and mark it done. 150. All right. So yeah, got to get working on tackling the rest of my to-do list for today. So uh, thank you so much for joining me and hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.